Hey guys, welcome back. This is great that you're getting another tutorial already. Uh, so I have a light colored stone. This is gonna darken up a little bit once I seal it with resin at the end. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, I am trying to use a lighter colored stone um, because I do like how it looks on a light stone. It's just going to be a paw print. You decide what kind of paw you want to do. If you want to do a cat paw, um, the, the bigger piece on the cat paw is more rounded. It's not, uh, shaped in a nice little cushy soft triangle. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call this. Um, and then of course there's little toe beans above that. Um, but each, each paw differs. Uh, if you want to do a bear paw or a wolf paw, there's claws involved. Of course, there's extra toes, toe beans on a bear paw. Uh, so look up the type of paw that you want to do, and then you can follow along with the tutorial, um, the way you want to do it. So I'm using Mayan Gold from Folk Art. A couple of people have asked me where I find that. I did order it online at Michael's because that was the only way I was able to find it anywhere. Uh, and it did cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> I promise. Um, and I had to keep checking back like almost daily to see if it was in stock yet. Uh, so if you're having a hard time finding it, I understand. I... I've been there, done that, and bought the spare arm and leg. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am outlining the parts that I like in pencil, and I'm going to erase all the stuff that I don't like afterwards. You guys know how I work. <laughs> so it does kind of look a bit strange. It, it's not my best paw print in the world, but if you're a dog lover, or any kind of paw lover, uh, depending on what you've decided to paint, um, this will be fun. This is a fun project. I have a couple of other paw print tutorials uh, on my channel, so take a look on my list of videos. I have cat prints that are dotted. I have Zentangle cat prints, Zentangle paw prints uh, for puppies, uh, rainbow dotted paw print for uh, memorial uh, memorial stones for our beautiful puppies who may have crossed over the rainbow bridge. Um, so yeah, if you're an animal lover, you can check out my channel for some of the cool stuff that you can paint with me. Uh, I am filling it in all in black, trying to keep my, I'm trying to thin out some of my gold lines as well, trying to keep them as thin as possible. They do not always have a nice crisp thin line first time around. Uh, it takes time, it takes drying time as well <laughs> to go in and not make a mess of things. So I am just filling it in because what we're gonna be doing inside of that is, well, what I'm doing is some flowers and some glitter because I didn't have glitter in my last tutorial. There's gonna be glitter in this one. There's gonna be two flavors this time around. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait to show you. So I'm filling it in. I'm going to make sure everything is dry before I work with it. And there I go. It's all dry. Nothing smearing across the stone. I've done that. I promise you I've done that. Um, but yeah, getting rid of all of my extra uh, pencil marks that I didn't need. And now I have a funky paw print. <laughs> a weird looking paw print. You want to make it big enough so that you can actually uh, create something inside where all the black area is, you want to make sure you have enough room to work with it. So this is a fairly decent sized rock. It's probably about five inches. And um, yeah, so I've filled up most of the rock with the paw so that I have lots of room to work with. So I'm just making sure that I have not ruined any of my gold line. Some of it disappeared, so I have to redo it. Um, but I do that a few times because sometimes things get out of hand. <laughs> I will be using blending brushes um, and my fine lining brush, which is what I'm using now. Those tutorials will be in the description of this video. Um, if you hear anything in the background, that is my cat. He is sleeping on, um, well, it was an important paper box it's just a box that I put all of my pictures that Jackson draws for me. Um, and that is under my bed. 
it's snuck away so that nobody can steal my precious papers, my precious artwork from Jackson. <laughs> but my cat has decided that he wants to sleep on top of that box under my bed. So if you hear anything, that is him adjusting and getting cozy. <laughs> so now that I have the gold lines where I want them and they're fairly dry, I am doing a nice fine line there's my cat. He might be waking up. <laughs> um, I'm putting a nice fine line of black around those little toe beans and around that little soft, squishy, triangular portion there. Um, yeah, I want to outline it all. If you are using a darker rock, you're not going to really see this outline. It just kind of crisps it up and cleans that gold uh, outline up a, a little bit. It just makes it more bold, I think. Um, but because I have a lighter colored stone, I am going to see that black outline even after I resin. So I'm just going to outline, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a little strange. Um, I'm a little quirky. I have some strange laughter and, uh, weird terminology for everything. So welcome here <laughs> and, uh, I'm glad you're painting with me. Uh, today I am using a new Dragonfly Glaze. It is 443, what did that say? Uh, good thing I have it right here. 44383. I will leave that listed in the description. It's kind of like hologram. It's got like a green, blue, teal shift. Um, but it is like hologram, only it's much finer. So it does have a very different look to it. You can use whatever kind of glittery black, black round. You can use whatever kind of glittery background you want. Um, you don't have to choose hologram. You don't have to choose this. It's up to you. If you don't want glitter, keep it black. Totally optional. But I really like this. It's a very fine, fine glitter. Make sure you put it as even as possible. Don't leave like big globs anywhere because it will be noticeable afterwards. So right now you can't really see the beauty of it. But I promise, oh, oh, there you go. You can kind of see the beauty as it's drying. It looks gorgeous. I love it. So I am going to do a bunch of weird circles all over. Um, and this is just a base point for each flower. I'm going to try and keep um, like at least one flower per toe bean and sometimes a little bit of another one. So I'm just trying to put these flowers in random spots. These are all the centers of our flowers. So my dragonfly glaze is dry. And I'm doing simple, simple. It kind of reminds me of Morning Glory from, from the picture. Um, when, when I look at the thumbnail, it kind of looks like Morning Glories. So if you've seen those, this might kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. But it's just simple, simple, four petals on each one. Um, I'm going to be filling in those petals with purple. We're going to be blending in some blue. We're going to be dotting in some pink. And it's going to look amazing. And then, of course, the centers of our flowers are going to be special as well. So I'm really excited about this one. You, you, you guys know I'm using gold in pretty much every single thing that I do. And if you're bored of gold, I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe it does just run in my blood. For some reason, I just love the look of gold. Um, so this has a lot of gold. <laughs> and it's going to have lots of glitter and color. And there's my notifications. Sorry. Turning them off now. Right now. They're done. No more notifications throughout the entire video. <laughs> it would also not be a Rachel's Rocks video if there wasn't some kind of stupid interruption. <laughs> so I'm using some new paint that I bought. Um... It is Martha Stewart. It's like a dark plum, like a dark, dark purple. I think it's Aubergine or aug Augerbean. <laughs> Augerbean. <laughs> Aubergine. Yes. It's a nice, deep, deep plum color. It's beautiful. So I'm going to fill it in with paint brushes, but then I am going to use my blending brush to sponge it down, kind of like a little, a little sponge, and give it a, a softer texture. 
So you'll see me go back and forth with two brushes and I'm just trying to fill it all in, get it outlined and just fill in right over top of the glitter. Like it's just easier. You can do the glitter afterwards so you're not just doing the whole thing with glitter. Um, but it really is much easier to just do your whole your whole base coat first and work with whatever you have over top. So uh, do the glitter first. It's just my my tip to you. <laughs> my friendly tip to you. So uh, it's going to be boring watching me uh, paint all of these petals in. So I'm probably not going to make you watch all of it. Um, I just wanted to see how everyone is doing. Is everyone staying healthy? Um, apparently Halloween is still a go in our town, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to send Jackson out. Um, I, I really just kind of was planning on having a pinata and he was going to beat the heck out of a pinata in the backyard. We could have a little bonfire and put our jackets on, have some hot chocolate <laughs> and it would be like, you know, a fond memory. And, and hopefully next year we're not so scared to go out for Halloween, I guess. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Now I'm tossed. I'm tossing. My, my brain is tossing. <laughs> I don't know whether I should let him go out trick-or-treating or not. Um, apparently, it's still a go. I'm not really sure why. Anyway, I am adding some bright blue to this purple. And most of the purple is dry. So I'm going to add some Cayman blue and it's just going around the center and it's okay if we get messy and we go over the gold. It's okay if we get into the black area. I'm good with that. Just blend it out so it looks nice and soft. So the centers of our flowers have like this burst of blue and they almost look lit up. So you'll see it. You'll see it in the end. The way the purple and the blue blend up together, it just kind of looks like there's a burst of light in the center of each one of these flowers. So you choose the colors you want to, and um, you don't even have to do the same type of flowers. You could do daisies, uh, little white and yellow flowers. You do whatever you want. Uh, this, I just really like the looks of these flowers and they did remind, remind me of morning glories, which of course I do not see out in my gardens right now because it's fall full fledged. We walked to school this morning in snow. <laughs> it was wet snow, but some of it was actually like settling on the grass. And I'm like, no, even my son Jackson, he's like, I don't like winter. I don't like being cold. I'm like, I hear you, buddy. I know I've been a Canadian my whole life and I still live here and still freeze my butt off every, every year. Every winter is at least eight months. <laughs> I'm kidding. But if anybody else here lives in Ontario, they know what I mean. Um, well, Northern Ontario. Now I have all my blue on my flowers and it's all blended, all smudged in nicely. And now in these black areas that we had, I got to make that good again. So I did blend over top of my circle. So now I kind of have to bring back the circle. This is the easiest way I know how to do this. Just do a big circle, a big blob, big blob, blob of gold paint. And now I'm going to outline all of my petals again because I smudged over top of them. I'm going to let that gold blob of paint in the center dry. And then we're going to go back in with a black dot so that it looks like a little circle again. You'll see, you'll understand there is a method to my madness. <laughs> so everything's being outlined and cleaned up. Make sure your paw is still outlined around the outsides as well, because sometimes we smudge around. We get out of hand with the blending and we make a mess. So we have to make sure we can fix that. Also the black outline helps with that because you can go over with the black around the outer edge, even if you have to make it a super thick black outline. If you've made a mess, you can fix it. Just have to be creative about it. <laughs> Now my gold is dry, so I can add my black dot. So it looks like we have 
our circles now. See what I mean? It does look like morning glories a little bit. We're going to change that up though by adding some pink dots. So each one, I'm kind of making sure that the gold is fairly thin and the dots, the black dots are fairly big. I want to see those big black dots there. So now I'm adding some pink and this is literally just called pink. It's from Folk Art. It's number 413. Oh, pink rose. Okay, pink rose. Sorry, I was wrong. And it's just like a nice bright, almost like a bubblegum pink. Nice and bright, and it looks super nice on top of that blue and purple. Like I said, you can do your flowers differently. You can choose different colors. Just get creative with it. You fill in your paw print with whatever the heck you want. You do you. So I'm trying to keep like the dots fairly small. If it's a smaller flower, um, and the dots are a bit bigger on the bigger flowers. And I'm doing three lines of dots and basically just letting my dotting tool run out of paint. And as it runs out of paint, the dots get smaller. Sometimes I steal paint from other dots that are bigger and they're hogging all their paint. I steal from them <laughs> instead of going all the way over to my paint tray. I just steal from other dots that have selfishly kept too much paint. <laughs> do you guys do the same thing? It's a little bit strange, but that's what I do. It's what I do and I'm not afraid to admit it. My name is Rachel and I am a rock addict. <laughs> All right, I am done that. That looks beautiful. Look at how bright they look. They look like they're, they're turned on. There's a light in there and they are turned on. <laughs> So I'm outlining all of my petals in black, making sure not to cut out any of the gold though. I really want to keep that gold there, but I'm just kind of separating each petal from one another by outlining. They stand out a little differently once you do that. See if you can take a look at what they look like before and then what they look like afterwards and see what you think. You decide if you want to outline them or not. I just do because that's what I like to do. Now I'm going to be using a UV light. You guys have seen me use this before if you have been to my channel for any length of time. Um, it basically is a light that you buy to dry nail polish, uh, gel nail polish, stuff like that. Um, so it's like a little UV light or LED light and it basically um, will dry the nail polish super fast. So I'm gonna be using a clear nail polish, but I'm also gonna be using the UV lamp in order to cure the nail polish. And then we're gonna be adding a special glitter over top. So I am just outlining getting everything separated from everywhere, separating the flowers from the glittery background. Uh, it just cleans it up. This is like one of my more relaxing parts. I know I'm done almost. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit, making sure, getting it resin ready. That's what I call it as well. Um, yeah, I know I'm almost done. We're just gonna do the center flowers. Um, and I'm gonna give you a heads up. I did accidentally delete a important portion of this tutorial and it just happened to be the way I apply the glitter to the centers of the flowers so you will see like how I get the nail polish top coat in the center of the flowers and how I cure it with a light um, but you're not gonna see me add the glitter so it's a little bit strange so I I had to like edit in a little piece for you um, so that you could see and uh, hopefully it turns out okay for us all. But I, I wanted to make sure that I show you the process at least. So it is ready for the next step. I'm gonna be using a clear coat. So it's a top coat gel polish that you need to cure with a lamp. So I'm gonna be using a kind that I got on Amazon today. Uh, I'm just putting this little piece of painter's tape down so that I can put the clear polish on there. Um, it's just a top coat. You can use this one or this one. I can, I got this one from the pink chair. Uh, you do get to use my discount code Rachel Mitchell if you shop at the pink chair. The link is in the description. Uh, today I'm using just this uh, less expensive one from Amazon. 
and I'm dabbing in with a with a dotting tool just the center, uh, just the center of each flower, just making sure it's covered in completely over the black area. And then I am going to cure this for about 40 seconds, 30 to 40 seconds under my lamp. Um, now it depends on the lamp that you're using. It also depends on the polish that you're using. So make sure you read the instructions. So you didn't even get to see me apply the powder. It's already done. So I have to apologize for that. So I've brought this in to uh, edited this in a different rock to show you the process. So this is where we left off. I had it under the lamp uh, where you can see that glitter already. I've already done this process with it. Um, but I want to show you, like I said, exactly how I do it. Uh, just ignore the stone. Um, and this is what I've done on the paw print rock, just like I told you. So here's the holographic shimmer powder. You can buy this at the pink chair as well. Don't forget my discount code. Um, I did get this one. I'm still using this one up. It's from Amazon and it's Born Pretty. That's the brand name of it, Born Pretty. Uh, using a little makeup eye sponge, eyeshadow sponge. And I'm just dabbing it on there. Sometimes you have to put a little bit of pressure depending on what kind of stuff you're using uh, but just get it on there smudge it on and it leaves like this beautiful glistening holographic dot um, so everywhere you put this gel put the the holographic powder uh, that's where it will shimmer so I have like I said done the center portion of the stone uh, and I'm now just doing the outer dots and I, I'm doing these outer dots exactly the same way that I did the dots in the centers of the flower uh, on, on the paw print. So I just wanted to make sure you got to see this process and that you didn't get left out of it all. So I'm going to let you look at that for a moment. I usually take a little fan brush and brush off all of the excess glitter. Get rid of all the extra stuff and uh, just check on everything. Make sure everything covered the way I wanted it to. If not, just go over it again. Put the clear polish over top and cure it again and then put the glitter on it and that's all you have to do. It's, it's easy to fix if it doesn't all work properly the first time. So, and then now it's basically resin ready. And here it is. Look at those shimmering centers. Look at that background glitter from the dragonfly glaze. These these little flowers do look like they're glowing a little bit. Um, and of course, it's a beautiful Lake Superior stone to begin with. So we still get to see that lovely stone, the natural color. Um, and it just goes nicely with this little paw print on there. I hope you guys really like this. Don't forget to hit subscribe and share the video with your family and friends. See if they want to make one too. Uh, you guys know how much I love and appreciate you. I love and appreciate every single one of you. Even if you just clicked on this video to see what the heck I was talking about. I love you. And you guys all matter to me. So keep painting and I will see you very soon. Bye guys.